Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the draft command found within an Autodesk Inventor part file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos of my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are in our part file. And as you can see here, I went ahead and modeled up a generic shape that we'll be using the draft command with. So let's go ahead and start out by clicking on the draft button up in the modify section of the ribbon. So we'll click on draft. And as you can see here, we get our draft command window that pops up. Now we have three main types of drafts to work with here. So moving over to the left side of this window and hovering over this first button here, we can see this is a fixed edge draft. Okay, so this creates the draft about a fixed edge of our choosing. Our next type of draft is a fixed plane draft. Okay, so that's that next button here. And so that essentially allows us to create a draft around a fixed plane. And our final draft variant here is our parting line draft. Okay, so this allows us to specify which parts of the geometry we want to retain and which parts we want to create a draft with. Okay, so let's move back up to the top here and start with the fixed edge draft. And then we'll work our way down through these various options here and their associated menus. Okay, so going back up to the top here, let's go ahead and get started. Here's our pull direction selection filter. And what the pull direction is, is it's the direction in which the draft angle is measured off of. So let's go ahead and select this top face here. And so whenever you select a flat face or a plane or anything like that, we'll get the arrow pointing normal to the face. Okay, so perpendicular to that face if we were facing that head on. Okay, so you can see the arrows going straight at us there. And uh, so now let's go ahead and select a face so that you can see what's happening here. We'll extend that angle just a little bit. Okay, so I want you to notice that this line here that this angle is measured from is parallel with that line. Okay, so that is our pull direction. And now you can see how our pull direction affects that angle measurement there, okay? So um, again, that allows us to select our pull direction. To activate that selection filter again, you can just click on this tile. Um, you know that it's active when there's a blue fill inside of the box, just like all the other commands within Autodesk Inventor. So this works very similarly to all the other commands you might be familiar with. OK, and we can also flip the direction of the pull direction. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's just go ahead and re um, select this face down here and uh, let's go ahead and flip this direction. And now you can see when I flip that direction, it actually removes material from my block. OK, so that is what that button does. So if you are facing the wrong direction with your draft or if you need to remove material when you're actually adding material, just go ahead and click that button. And it'll flip that around for you. OK, so now let's go ahead and move down to the faces button. So you've already seen this in use. This just allows you to select the faces you want to draft. Now we can go around and click everything individually if you'd like. OK, now we have additional options here. Um, we have automatic face chain and automatic blending. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what those do. So we'll go ahead and cancel this. And I want to go ahead and create a fillet on each one of these corners. So I'll just go ahead and select these four corners real quick. OK, let's go ahead and get our isometric view back. And let's go ahead and just increase the radius of that. All right, so going back into draft, let's go ahead and select the same face as our pole direction. And um, if I didn't mention it already, you can select a plane, a face, an edge, an axis, or entities of that sort to specify your pole direction, okay? So in this case, I selected the face. You can also select an upright line. So you can select an edge that's going in the same direction or maybe a reference axis and so on and so forth. OK, so now let's take a look at automatic face chain. So I've already selected my pull direction. And as you can see, when I hover over the part, it's picking up all of these faces in one go because they're all continuous. OK, so um, these curves here are tangent to these lines, or I should say these lines are tangent to these curves here because I created a fillet on each corner and that's allowing the uh, four sides to be picked up automatically. Now, if I want to little bit more control over what I'm selecting, I can deselect automatic face chain and you'll see it only picks up the one side at a time. So let's go ahead and just pick up a couple sides. Actually, we'll deselect this one side and to deselect various entities. All you got to do is hold the shift key on your keyboard, hover over the entity you want to deselect. And while holding the shift key, you want to left click on your mouse. And there we go. It goes away. And let's go ahead and drag this angle out a little bit. 
And you can see the corners are automatically blended with this draft angle here. But let's say we don't want that. Well, we can go ahead and uncheck automatic blending and you can see it just drafts that single face that I selected. Moving up to the top right, we have our draft angle parameter field where we can either type in our draft angle. So for example, I can type in 10 degrees and it'll change. I can uh, also click and drag this orange arrow and you can see it's automatically showing me what my new draft angle is there. And then I can also click this arrow here and it gives me a couple of different options. This first option allows us to measure an angle from within our part file. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now, in this particular case, I don't have an angle smaller than 90 degrees, so it's just going to give me an error, but I can select those two um, faces there and it's gonna populate this field with 90 degrees. So you get the idea of how that works. Now let's take a look at our other option here, which is select feature dimension. This allows us to select a specific feature dimension found within our part file. Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So what I'll do here is I'll hit cancel and I'm going to create a reference dimension that we can use as a feature dimension. So I'll go back in the original sketch that we used to create this extrusion. So we'll double click on this sketch one here in the model browser. And uh, let's go ahead and create a reference dimension between this line and this line here. So we're at a 45 degree angle and that's fine. It's gonna tell me that, hey, um, this sketch is already fully defined. So it's going to create a driven dimension. Okay, so it's basically just a reference dimension and you know that because it's in parentheses there. So let's go ahead and finish the sketch. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the sketch visible so that we could see it at all times. And let's go back into draft. So we'll select this as our pull direction once again. We'll select this face, okay? And let's go to select feature dimension. We'll go ahead and hover over our part and you can see it highlights all in green. So let's go ahead and left click. And now we can select the feature dimension of interest. Okay, so let's hover over that 45 degree reference angle that I have there and then left click. And you can see it automatically populates this field with D5, which is the designated name for this particular dimension. You can also manually type in uh, D5, for example, if you know what that angle is called. So you have plenty of flexibility here um, when it comes to setting Setting your draft angle. Moving down to the bottom right, we also have additional control over how the draft behaves, okay? So since we're working with a fixed edge draft currently, we only have one option and that's one way. So in other words, that means the draft can go only in one way based on this one fixed edge here. And you know which edge is fixed by the color yellow. So the yellow edge is our fixed edge. So um, actually on that subject, I wanna go ahead and talk about how we can control which edge is our fixed edge. So what we need to do first is let's go ahead and just cancel out of this and we'll go back into draft and let's select the same face as our pull direction. Okay, so we have that normal arrow facing up and let's go ahead and select this one face. Now, when you select a face, make sure you're cognizant of how close you are to one edge or the other. So if I click up here closer to this edge, you'll notice this line up here turns yellow and that behaves as my fixed edge. So even when I flip the pull direction, okay, that remains my fixed edge. So let's go ahead and try that again. We'll go back up to draft. I'll select this top face for our pull direction. And then um, when I go to select this face, this time I'll select it closer to this bottom edge here. And notice how this bottom edge turns yellow. Okay, so that is my fixed edge this time around. And when I flip the pull direction, you can see that that bottom edge remains yellow. Okay and it just changes how my draft is created. So again, if you want to select a specific edge as your fixed edge, select the face closer to the edge of interest. Now, let's go ahead and try that again, but instead of selecting this top face for our pull direction, let's select an edge for our pull direction. So we'll hit cancel, we'll go back into draft, and this time I'll select this line here. Okay, you can see it's facing up, We'll select this face and I'll select it closer to the top because I want this top line here or this top edge to be my fixed edge. So when I click there, you see that edge turns yellow and we get the same end result, okay, compared to what happened before when we selected this top plane, but this time we selected a line to designate our pull direction. Again, you can select a reference plane or a reference axis as well to designate this direction.
Moving on to our fixed plane draft variant, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these fields here. So you notice that our first selection filter here has changed to fixed plane rather than pull direction. Okay, so that's our first difference there. And you'll notice that we have these two additional behavior options available to us here at the bottom right hand corner. Now the draft angle box and these two check boxes work exactly the same as the options here for the fixed edge option. So we won't be covering those um, from here on out. If you need a refresher on those, go back towards the beginning of this video and rewatch that there. Now let's go ahead and designate our fixed plane. So we'll go ahead and click on this top face here. It turns purple and that just means that this is now our fixed plane. We'll select the side face as our drafted face and you notice it sort of flares outwards starting from the top, okay? That's because this is our fixed plane. So when I go to flip this plane, you'll notice that it either extends out from this plane here or it cuts inwards towards that plane, okay? Now, let's say for example, I wanted to sort of invert this draft in the other direction. What I can do is I can go back to the selection filter for the fixed plane and I can select this bottom face here. And when I do that, it tapers upward and outward from this bottom face, which is now the fixed plane. Okay, so that's how it works differently um, in comparison to the fixed edge variant of this command. So, okay, so that is our fixed plane and we can invert the direction of that and it either adds material or removes it. And of course we have our draft angle and our uh, two options down here. This works the same as the uh, other options for the fixed edge variant. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our behavior options down here in the bottom right hand corner. To do this, we're going to create a reference plane that's mid-plane to these two faces here. It doesn't have to be mid-plane, but I'm just doing that for simplicity in this particular example. We'll go up to the work feature section of the ribbon. We'll open up this drop down under plane and let's select mid-plane between two planes. We'll select this top face, this bottom face. And as you can see here, now we have our new reference plane that is mid-plane between these two faces on this extruded part. I went ahead and removed the fillets here on the corners because it'll make it easier for you to see what happens when we use the fixed plane option here in the draft menu. So we'll go back to draft, we'll click fixed plane, we'll select this reference plane as our fixed plane, and now let's select that same face on this side. And you'll notice as we increase that angle and sort of rotate this around, it sort of hinges about the intersection uh, between this reference plane and the part body itself, okay? So that is what you can do with a reference plane in the space. So depending on what you're trying to do with your part or what type of geometry you have to work with, this allows for a lot of flexibility in your design efforts. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these two additional behavior options found here in the bottom right hand corner. Of course, you're familiar with the one way variant. Okay, so um, with one way, we get our draft angle in one direction. Now, if we click symmetric here in the middle, you'll see that it creates a symmetric draft around that reference plane that we put into space. And our last option is our asymmetric option, which works similarly to the symmetric option, but we can set two separate angles for our draft here. So um, say for example, I can add material here at the top and take away material at a different angle here on the bottom. So again, adds a lot of flexibility for your design efforts. So um, that's available to you as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our parting line variant for the draft command. Now, you may have noticed that when we selected parting line, we get two additional options that pop up here in the bottom left hand corner. The first one fixes our parting line. So uh, in other words, wherever our parting line lands, it stays in a static state. OK, and the second option allows us to actually move the parting line. And I'll go over that more in detail in just a moment. So starting with the fixed parting line variant of this command, let's move up to the top left hand corner. As you've seen before, we can specify our pull direction with this first selection filter. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll select this edge here. You see that arrow is running upwards along that edge. And uh, now we need to select our parting tool, which is going to be this reference plane. I just added another reference plane sort of offset from the center line of this part. And uh, now let's select our face that we want to draft. So we'll just select this one face here. And let's go ahead and extend this angle out so you can see exactly what's happening. So we'll take a look at it from the right side. And you can see here, this intersection point between the plane and the part creates sort of a hinge point for these uh, draft angles to work around. And of course you can go in either direction. Okay, so um, you're already familiar with these two options here in the bottom right hand corner. Of course we have symmetric and asymmetric, so we can change the angles independently of one another as you've seen previously. Let's set that back to symmetric. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between the fixed parting line and the move parting line options. Now, I want you to note the behavior while we're still in the fixed parting line option. So I'll go ahead and change this angle 
And just notice that the parting line stays static, okay? It's stationary, it's not moving anywhere. The edges here on the outside are actually moving around that parting line, okay? So when we use this option here, you'll see that the actual parting line moves. So as we change this angle, both the edge and the parting line moves, okay? So now, let's say for example, I wanna fix this edge up here. I can use this new selection filter that pops up and I can select this edge to remain static, okay? So now I can change this angle and it stays as a static entity. Now we can clear our selections a couple of different ways. We can either hold shift and click on the entity we wanna deselect, okay? So we can either do it that way, or we can press the clear all button, and that automatically deselects all of our selected fixed edges for us, okay? So you can see it goes away when I click that. Now, we can either manually select our fixed edges, okay? So we have our selection filter active with the blue fill inside of the box, so we can select these edges here or we can go ahead and use the select boundary button. So when we click that, it picks up those two edges for us automatically all in one button press. So now that we have both of our edges fixed, let's take a look at the behavior of this draft angle. Okay, so as we increase the angle, you'll see the parting line moves outwards, but those two edges stay the same, okay? Again, if we clear all of that and change this angle, you'll see that this particular edge actually moves outwards, okay? So based on the position of this reference plane, that will change the behavior of this particular command. Now let's go ahead and move over to the bottom right-hand corner and take a look at these three options available to us. So you'll notice that it's currently set to angle for both. So as I adjust this angle, it adjusts the angle for both the top face here and the bottom face about this parting line. Now let's go ahead and select this option, which is angle for top. Angle for top measures this angle based off of this top face. Okay, so if I go to this uh, view here and change this angle, notice how it adjusts the angle based on the pull direction and this top face here. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this one on the right, which is angle for bottom, and it sets that angle based off of the pulling direction arrow. Okay, so it sets it off of this direction and this bottom face. Okay, so that is what those two additional options do for you at the bottom. And of course, if you want it to go back to angle for both, you can just simply click that option there. Okay and you get your uh, behavior as you saw it in the beginning. Moving down in our command window, we can also toggle our previews on or off by clicking in this checkbox. So currently we have previews enabled, so that allows us to see what this draft will look like before we hit okay or apply. But if we uncheck that option there, you can see our preview goes away. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the draft command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.